Hello everyone, I am Dr. Lok Bahadur Shrestha. In this video, I am going to talk about sample collection, packaging and transportation for the diagnosis of COVID-19. Firstly, I would like to start with the type of specimen to be collected. The preferable specimens are nasopharyngeal swab followed by throat swab. If a single sample could be collected, always prefer nasopharyngeal swab over throat swab. However, it is advised to collect both samples as far as possible to improve the sensitivity. Here is a list of equipments required for sample collection. Personal protective equipment, viral transport medium, swab sticks, ziplock bag, outer container, tongue depressor, ice box and ice pad. At first, let's talk about PPE. Since sample collection is an aerosol generating procedure, one should wear proper PPE for sample collection. PPE includes N95 masks, gown, goggles, face shield, shoe cover and cap. Viral transport medium or VTM contains 3 ml of fluid composed of gelatin and antimicrobial agents in a buffered salt solution. It helps to prevent the specimen from drying maintains viability of the virus and prevents contamination. There are several types of BTM. Some comes in a plastic pouch with swab stick inside them while some do not have pouch or swab sticks. Swabs should be made up of rayon or dacron with plastic shaft. Cotton or calcium alternate swab should not be used since it may inhibit PCR reaction. A stick with wooden shaft may cause trauma during sample collection. We also need Ziploc bag and outer container for sample packaging. Tongue depressor is required for collecting throat swab. Ice box and ice pads are required to maintain cold chain during sample transportation. Ice pads should be filled with water and kept in freezer before use. Now I will discuss about the preparations that are to be made before beginning sample collection. Firstly. Take a detailed history and fill the requisition form properly. Patient's information, history of travel and contact, and symptoms are all vital. Also fill the name and contact number of attending physician. Label the BTM, Ziploc bag, and the outer container. Inform the patient about the procedure and the discomfort they might feel. Finally, wear the PPE. Now, let's discuss about the procedure to collect nasopharyngeal swab. Ask the patient to take off their marks and blow their nose into a tissue paper to clear excess secretions from the nasal passage. Tilt the patient's head slightly backward so that the nasal passage becomes more accessible. Ask the patient to close their eyes to lessen the mild discomfort of the procedure. Gently insert the swab along the nasal septum, just above the floor of the nasal passage to the nasopharynx until resistance is felt. Leave the swab in place for several seconds to absorb secretions and then slowly remove the swab while rotating it. Place the swab in the BTM, break the shaft and close the lid. Now let's talk about the procedure to collect throat swab. Ask the patient to open their mouth wide open. Depress the tongue. Swap the posterior pharynx behind the tonsils with the swab stick, avoiding the tonsils. Place the swab stick immediately into the same BTM and break the shaft. Cap the BTM properly. Sample Packaging Samples should be safely packed in triple packaging system. If VTM is available in plastic pouch, it can be used as first layer. Place the BTM inside the pouch and seal it with adhesive tape. Label the pouch with patient's name. Otherwise, use a Ziploc bag as first layer and lock it. Second layer. Place the first packing into a larger Ziploc bag and seal it. Third layer. Place the second packaging into the outer container. If outer container is not available, 
we can use two layers of Ziploc bag. Finally, we'll talk about sample storage and transportation. Slice the sample pack container into the ice box. Put ice pads on both sides. Use cotton or tissue paper on both sides of the container to avoid direct contact with the ice pad. Samples should be transported maintaining cold chain to the laboratory with prior information. It can be stored in the refrigerator up to 72 hours. In case of delay of more than 72 hours, it should be stored at minus 70 degrees centigrade.